Um, hopefully this is all going to sort of edit to get together, uh, you know, relatively seamlessly. Um, I haven't been sort of jumping around a bit. Um, so I think the last thing I recorded was welding the various bits and pieces together, like down here and up there. Um, so now really onto the sort of final bit of it, which is to, um, sort out the little stand which will have a base plate onto uh, on the bottom of it which will then in turn be fixed on top of a plinth of some sort um, which the client will be supplying um, so what I had uh, what I'd done like as in the sample was just used a piece of tube so I'd sort of thought of doing something similar uh, these are a couple different diameters um, and like notching out a bit either side and then um, this would get welded in and then the the base would get welded to uh, a piece of plate I think that would look a little bit utilitarian so what i was thinking might be nice is to at least try and sort of flare the base of the, the tube i'm not going to use this stuff that's a bit wide i'm going to uh, this stuff's a smidge narrower it's 140 mil so what i was thinking i'm going to cut a piece of it to an oversized length and then i'm going to heat up just the bottom say i don't know 50 mil and i think i'm going to try and do this with a gas torch and then i'm going to press into it a large solid sphere to try and flare it out down at the bottom here so what i have over here in my 12 ton hydraulic press is a 150 mil solid sphere up in the ram and then what i was going to do is cut say approximately 200 mil tall piece of the um the, the 140 mil tube put it here probably in situ heat it with a gas torch around the like let's say 50 mil area and then press down into it to try and flare it out i've never done anything like this so i don't know if it's going to work but hopefully it will
Now that this has cooled down, I've um, marked the point at which where I'm going to cut it off. Um, and then on the bench here is, uh, that's 140 mil square. And these lines represent um, where I'll notch into this. So I'll put that, well, let's go turn it up the other way, face down, mark on, on the piece of pipe there and there and then notch out so that what it can do is sort of slot up into there this is my notched out piece of tube and in theory what it will do oh yeah and also cut down to size um, is slide in but what I need to do is lift the sphere up a little bit because currently uh, it won't be able to slide in into its position completely. So I need to lift the sphere up and then drop it back down into it. What I don't yet know if I want to put some plate sort of on the top of it to kind of butt up to this. So like a sort of semicircle of plate and a semicircle of plate. I'm going to have a look at it and sort of judge whether what I think is going to be nicest. I've drawn on to this two lines to tell me where this is meant to be sitting. Perfect. So that's pretty damn straight. It's in the bubble. could go up this other side well it's in the bubble it's I mean, I think it's, it looks good. So I think from here, you can see what I mean about it. it's nice how it, you can see this bar completely. If I capped up there, then just the bar disappearing, I don't know, it just sort of feels like it, defeats 
I don't know, just sort of, it's hiding something or it's, it, uh, it's, um, hiding the construction in a way. It's like hiding the, the, I don't know, like the, the truth of the complete hoop. Things are a little bit bitty at the minute as I sort of um, do a little bit of one thing and a little bit of another. Um, so anyway, I've welded the, um, the the flared out piece of pipe on the bottom. Um, so uh, the currently it seems that the uh, the sphere is going to be standing on an 800 mil diameter piece of round stone, which was actually a, uh, a sharpening stone. So. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a 400 mil diameter round piece of six mil plate and then weld it to the um, the base of this. Um, the client is uh, concerned about the visibility of the fixings. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to cut this um, plasma cut out um, the 400 mil circle and then I'm going to um, cut a um, hole out of the center as well um, but these marks here is where like the outer edge of the uh, the flared out base is so when um, the flared out base marries up against these marks then it's in the correct position um, so what I'm going to do in any case is uh, suggest a fixing method, you know, dis discrete fixing type to the client, and then um, take it from there to see if they are satisfied with that. So um, what I'll do is I'll tack weld this circle, um, this circular piece of plate to the bottom of it and sort of offer it up. And then what I'll do is probably on the floor is draw out an 800 mil diameter um, circle and shade it in and that would be representative of the the sharpening stone that it's going to sit on then plonk it on there send a video to a client saying this is you know effectively um, the size of the plate versus the, the size of the stone and it, uh, I'll put some like nuts in the position where their uh, the fixings would go and say so this is how visible they would be and you know let me know what you think and if you need to change tack then we'll change tack
Apologies that the recording of this has become a little bit intermittent, but um, I've been doing a number of things, and as I sort of chop and change between what I'm doing, I'm forgetting to pick up the phone to record. In any case, uh, I did record doing this plasma cutting. Um, the uh, space on my phone died out when I was cutting the outer circle, but you saw me at least completing the inner circle. So uh, the reason for doing that is so that there's a sort of clear view down through the sculpture, through to the stone beneath. I thought that would be a nice um, touch rather than having it as a completed plate. And also in the event that this is galvanized, it gives a uh, drainage for the galve so it doesn't pool in the bottom. Um, so now I've tack welded the, uh, this little flared out base to um, the plate and I'm just going to join all these welds up. But this is all welded up now. So what I'll do is I'll run in with a grinder and just blend in these seams so they just sort of flow into each other a bit nicer. A considerable amount of time has passed since um, the last piece that I recorded. Um, it's now finished and on a paddock, ready to be taken for its finishing treatment. Um, what I ended up doing, because uh, I think the last thing I recorded was this welding down at the bottom, I actually did another seam um, of weld, another bead of weld below where I welded last, um, and then I um, ground into it so there's a nice sort of little radius running around at the bottom. Um, so uh, once upon a time in these videos I said that it was going to be um, galvanised. It's actually going to get a different um, treatment. Uh, it's actually, um, the clients have decided they'd um, prefer for it to be um, uh, zinc sprayed and then um, uh, painted. Um, so it's a, still a zinc treatment but um, a different application of zinc. Um, it's going to be a sort of light bronze colour, which is um, catches the light quite nicely and takes on um, sort of various tones in um, different lights. So it'll be quite uh, unique. It's going to be quite sophisticated. Anyhow, yeah, onwards and upwards. Um, sorry that all these videos have become so sort of sketchy, but I'm doing multiple things and um, sort of just jumping between jobs and so the continuity of sort of doing one thing after another on the sphere has kind of gone as I'm sort of, you know, doing other stuff and then jumping back and doing a bit on the sphere. So I guess the next thing will be seeing it, it treated and ultimately taking to site for it to be positioned on its plinth.